guys welcome back to home decorating with Liz today I am here to talk to you guys and do a little chit chat because you as you know October the 1st through October 31st is the National Breast Cancer Awareness Month yay and also I am a breast cancer survivor see I've got my hat on I've got my t-shirt on and my two bracelets. So I'm all set for the month. I'll be wearing my pink throughout the whole month of October, and I encourage you guys to do the same as well. I will have a link down in my description box uh, to the National Breast Cancer Awareness Association so that you can look up some information and get all of what you need okay but this video I'm not going to be sharing that information I'm going to be sharing a little bit of my testimony since I am a breast cancer survivor I wanted to just uh, come on here and encourage you guys to get your mammogram ladies don't be afraid to get your mammogram it's nothing scary it really isn't um, you just go in there and get it. Make an appointment and get your mammogram. Don't do like I did and wait and wait and put it off. So let me get ready to get started with this testimony and it'll give you a little bit of background um, how the cancer came on and you know more information. So I hope that you are encouraged by hearing this testimony. Um, I'm not going to share the entire thing because this video will be too, too long. But I'm going to share different uh, things about it. What I experienced, what I, all that I went through leading up to the diagnosis and then what I went through after um, the diagnosis and treatment and so forth. So I've got to put my glasses on because, yes, I have to read. So I'm sorry about the glare if it's bothering you guys. Okay. On September 2009, I went in to have a mammogram. I felt relaxed as ever and I didn't think anything about it. The test went well and I tolerated it well and it felt good. Well, when I returned home and barely got my foot in the door, my husband says, the phone is for you. It was my doctor's office. They told me that they had just received my test result and that I need to schedule an appointment ASAP. Hmm, I was wondering. I didn't think too much about it, except I wondered which test they were talking about because I also had a well woman exam and they didn't tell me any specifics of that. I did have a chance to speak to the doctor and she told me she was writing up an authorization for surgery. I shouted, surgery? What do you mean? You know, I, that's what I said. I was just so upset when I heard that word surgery. I didn't want to hear that. She didn't want to explain over the phone, so I made an immediate appointment that day to see her. At this point, I didn't feel fearful. I was just only upset and disappointed because of how I disliked having surgery and the effects of the anesthesia. So, During the appointment, the doctor shared that the results indicated breast cancer. When I heard the word cancer, I was shocked and I was upset. <clears throat> I showed no emotion on the outside but inside of me was screaming. I knew God was with me and that I just have to stand and trust him to bring me through this. After the appointment was over, my mother and I, we stood in the exam room and we both prayed. She prayed for me. After that, I knew it was a done deal. I knew that I was going to recover. I just trusted and I believed. So I, I was scheduled to have a biopsy surgery a few weeks later in October. The results were of an evil report indicating stage one breast cancer. At 
At this time, I started reading a book called Through the Fire and Through the Water by Dr. Betty Price. This book was encouraging and inspiring to me. I did what she said to do, and I said what she said to say, and I wrote down all of the important scriptures and things that to help me get through daily. I stood on the word and I claimed my healing according to Mark 11, 24. I was too uncomfortable with the surgeon and his unprofessionalism that did the biopsy. It was a man, of course, so I went in to have a second opinion. The second surgeon was a female and she confirmed the previous results from the first doctor. She said, if I was comfortable with her to do the surgery, she would do it. Uh, she said that she needed to do surgery because they needed to remove the tumor and some lymph nodes that were under my armpit. I said, yes, I feel very comfortable with you, doctor. And it was like peace came over me in that moment. I felt like, I just felt like she was the one to do the surgery. I felt so comfortable. The doctor explained to me that I needed, she explained to me everything that I needed to know. She said that if there is cancer in the lymph nodes, that she would need to do a lymph node dissection and the bad effects that could happen to my arm. Um, the lymph node dissection is when they go into the, uh, into the armpit and remove the lymph nodes. But there are a lot of side effects that could come with that. She explained all that to me. <clears throat> so I just said, okay, well, let's do this thing. My surgery was scheduled on November, in November, and I was all ready and prayed up. Once I arrived at the hospital and got prepped up by the nurses, I laid there in bed with such peace I was not scared, I was not worried at all. I, I was just so comfortable. I had my church praying for me. They prayed for me before I went in to have surgery and I just felt at peace, you guys. I, I did not think anything bad was gonna happen to me. I just said, no, I'm going to be all right. And that's what I went on. Once I arrived at the hospital, okay, I already said that. I laid there and felt the peace. I knew that people were praying for me because I could actually feel the presence all over me. And it was awesome. I kid you not. For those of you who are believers, you know what I'm talking about. This might be confusing to some of you who are not, but that's okay. I would just lay in that bed before they came in to get me and I was just singing songs, different songs to lift me up and um, until I would doze off to sleep. Then I would wake up and sing more songs until they decided to wheel me in for surgery. Before the anesthesiologist put me to sleep, I said, and these were the words that came out of my mouth, all is well and this too shall pass. I did not care what he thought. I mean, I didn't say it like, all is well. I mean, I wasn't shouting. I just said it, all is well, and this too shall pass. I didn't care what anyone thought because I was on a mission for healing. So, and I had already believed that I was healed. So it was a done deal. Okay, after having the surgery, the surgery was a success. Yes, the doctor gave the family good news. There were no lymph nodes in my armpit. Thank God. When my mother heard that, <laughs> when my mother heard that, she shouted for joy. She was just so happy, and she was a little loud in that, um, in the room there. That's what I was told. She got kind of loud and was like, oh my gosh. 
but that's okay. She was happy. The doctor said she removed all of the tumor. She gave me a good prognosis. Also, she said that I would still need chemotherapy, radiation, and hormonal treatments as well. God is good. He really is. He was there through me. He was there with me through these treatments and allowed me to really relax and not feel scared, fretting, or of any kind. When you're given an evil report such as cancer, you really need to believe God if you are a believer. Like I said, those of you who are, you will really understand what I'm talking about. Some of you won't, but that's okay. I'm here to just encourage you guys, and this, since I am a believer of God, I wrote this testimony, and there's certain things in here that you may not understand, but then you might. So just take from it what you can. Okay, God kept me, he kept me strong in times when I didn't feel good. I would open up my Bible and I would read different scriptures just to kind of get me strong, to help me to stay sane, just to, just to help me. Because when you go through chemotherapy, it's, it, it, it makes you feel terrible. I mean, literally terrible, okay? No, I did not get sick. You know, some people will actually throw up, things like that. No, I didn't do that, thank God. I think because they gave me some anti-nausea medicine, and for me, I guess it worked. So I'm happy for that. Okay. Sometimes I would have to isolate myself and leave the living room from my son and my husband just to go lay in the bed and be quiet and still. Sometimes I would uh, talk to myself. And I had to talk to myself. I had to encourage myself. When things did not look good, when my body was going through some very bad side effects from that chemotherapy, I had to get in a quiet place and just be by myself. Um, my mind would tell me Oh, you know, you're going to die. This is not going to work, blah, 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 blah. But I refuse to believe that. I had faith in God that I was going to live and not die. And that settled that. In spite that I didn't feel good, I continued to exercise. I really did. I cooked dinner. I would go to church. Even when I didn't feel like getting out the bed and I didn't feel my 100% best, I would make myself live. I said, just because of this diagnosis, just because I am receiving chemo does not keep me away from living. I have to continue doing the things that I already have been doing. And that's what I did. I was so determined to act strong, no matter what. To sum this testimony up, because it's long and I can't give you everything in it, I just... Um, I'm just very happy and I'm thankful that I made it, that I came through this with flying colors. And I always say to my husband, thank you for your love and support. The one that took care of me when I had to endure the one that took care of me and had to endure watching me go through these challenging times. I know it was hard for him. It really was. And to my family and my friends, I've also thanked them as well. You know, because they prayed for me. They gave me support. They would call me and everything. Um, and last but not least, my beloved mother. I thank her too because she would drive me to my treatments when my husband couldn't. Always available, she was always ready. <sighs> Excuse me guys. Get it together. <laughs> but yes, my mother was there for me 
along with my husband and my children. Of course, Aaron was too young to know, you know, too much of anything. My daughter, um, she was in her 20s at that time. So, you know, she was supportive too. Everyone that knows me, my in-laws, um, friends, just supportive of me. But that is a little bit of my testimony, and I'm, I was only sharing it to encourage you guys. If I can help encourage one person to go out and get that mammogram, if you receive a diagnosis of cancer, breast cancer, be strong. If you don't know God, then you need to. <laughs> You really do, because I'm telling you, as he is my witness, he is the only one that has got me through what I went through. I'm telling you, that chemotherapy is no joke. You hear me? It is awful. It makes you feel horrible, 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 and then some more horribles, okay? But I made it through. I have had the surgery. I had, I was going through the chemotherapy, then I had to go through radiation. Now the radiation, you don't feel anything. It's just a machine that they would put, angle it down toward, it was my right breast. So they would angle it down here and you don't feel anything. The radiation goes in there. Uh, to this day, the breast is a little, it's not smooth like the other. And the surgeon told me, she says, you know, hey, I can remove that part if you want me to. And I told her, I said, no, no more surgery, no. I don't do surgery unless it's necessary. Let's just keep it the way it is. It's not bothering me. It's not um, affecting my quality of life. It's not affecting anything in my marriage. So I'm not worried about that. We'll just leave it alone. But anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed listening to my testimony. And if you're out there and you're afraid to go get a mammogram, take my word. Do not be afraid. I believe that one reason why the breast cancer might have come to me is because I weighed 320 pounds at the time. I just kept stuffing myself, eating all processed foods, all sugars. Cancer feeds onto sugar, guys. And that's why to this day I have said to myself, no more of it. I am now eating a 95 to 98% plant-based meals. I choose to do that because I want to become healthier and I want to get all this weight off and I have some good news to share with you guys. I went to the doctor today and from last month to this month, I have lost six pounds. Yay! I'm so happy. I was a little skeptical because I said to myself, when I look at myself, it always doesn't look like I'm losing. And my mother told me, she said, that's because there's so many layers of fat underneath all that, oh, your body. So the layers from underneath is what's coming out first. So, but it is showing and it's showing not just in my face and in here, it's showing everywhere else. And, you know, when I'm ready, I will share, you know, as I get a little smaller, I'll, I will share some, you know, how I look. I'm just not comfortable. I don't like showing my whole body. Um, still to this day, even though I've lost weight, I just don't like to show the entire body. I don't know. That's just how I am. But anyway, I will share with you guys in due time. I really will. But I want to share another thing. A total, I have lost a total of, let me see, 50, 56 pounds since April. That is an accomplishment. That's a huge accomplishment. With all the exercising that I'm doing five days a week, busting my butt, <laughs> being sore, <laughs> I tell you, it's all paying off and I'm just so happy. So I wanna encourage you guys, if you're not healthy, if you're not eating right, please 
learn about nutrition because nutrition is what's going to change your life. Get your mammogram, schedule your mammogram. There are programs out there um, that will pay for your mammogram or offer you a percentage, a discount, you know, if you have to pay for it. So don't be afraid to get your mammogram, ladies, if your insurance is not paid. There's always ways, there's always free programs. So get your mammogram, take my word, you want to do it. Mammogram does save lives. In spite of any negative that you have heard, it does save lives. I am a living testimony of that. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you for tuning back in. And if you're not yet a member of the Home Decorating with Liz family, please join us. Click on that subscribe button and also click on the little bell right next to it so that you will be notified whenever I upload videos and you won't miss any of them. Okay, you guys? You guys have a blessed day and let's get going with the breast cancer awareness. Get that mammogram. Have a good day. Bye-bye.